Hi, here's a few thoughts uh, from my preach on Sunday. My preach was called Called Together and I was speaking about um, the in, up and out triangle that we've been using for our discipleship um, series of preaching, making disciples. And I've been looking at the in part of that triangle, which is building our character, understanding how we grow um, as people made and growing into the image of Jesus. So um, that, and the aspect of it I was looking at was church. So let's have a little uh, run, run through a few things that I really feel like I want to outline. First of all, um, I'm going to read from Acts, tw uh, uh, sorry, Acts 2, verse 42 to 47. So if you could turn there with me, that'd be great. Acts 2, 42 through to 47. It says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give anyone, to, give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts, and they broke bread in homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. So the context of this passage is they have just received the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. He's been poured out. Jesus returned to heaven. So the, the church has been birthed out of this people who are suddenly turning to God, who are, are believing in Jesus and then receiving this Holy Spirit. And they're, they've found that they're, they're living these lives that are very different. They're, they're empowered, they're renewed, they're, in, they're encountering God and they're reconnecting and connecting with God. And they have a desire to draw together and be church together, even though they don't really know what that looks like. So that's that's the context of what this 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 um, verse that Luke is describing the early church to us. That's the context of it. Is the Holy Spirit has just come? So it's not organised, but He wants to describe to us exactly what it looks like, and so that we can use it like a, like a mirror and understand for ourselves um, what it was like then, and compare and, and think about what it's like now and what God is doing with us now. And the, this passage kind of like it really stands out from um, our culture today, which is very different in that we're not dependent on each other. We don't share everything. We don't go out of the way to um, be dependent on each other. But actually, we're encouraged to live independent lives rather than be interdependent upon each other. We're not encouraged to be vulnerable with each other. It's just we're encouraged to be strong and to be able to take care of everything. So just to try and highlight that some things as church like as church in our lives, we can really um, focus on and see it is important as we grow together. The key word being together. So first of all, they were generous together. They had everything in common and they gave to anyone who had need. And this generosity is, is seen really in that... Um, they had experienced the love of God, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and the generosity of God was uh, touched their lives to be generous to each other and to love each other. And we can do the same as we move on with God, as we put him at the centre and experience his Holy Spirit. A generosity is like an automatic outcome of people who are with God and who are experiencing his love. They pray together. Prayer is so important and Acts talks about prayer throughout the book. They It says they broke bread together in their homes. They ate together with glad and sincere hearts praising God. Of course, we can't do that at the moment. But you get this sense of they always wanted to draw together and pray and praise God and put him at the centre. So I did mention on Sunday, whatever, whatever context that looks like to, to you, however you can pray with someone, even if it's in twos or even if it's over the phone, find those opportunities to pray because it's a key part of being together. And God says, Jesus says in the Gospels that 
that when we meet together, he is with us. There's something about being together and praying where we encounter him in a way, in a different way than we do when we're by ourselves, but we miss out on if we're not taking um, seriously fellowshipping together and having these, these prayer times together. Reading the Bible together. The Bible tradition, um, in when it was... It, it what doesn't exist um, in the early church, of course, because the New Testament wasn't yet written. So a lot of what they were um, understanding about the teaching from Jesus was by word of mouth. It was by um, the apostles sharing what had been memorised of what Jesus had taught them until it had act until it made it to become um, written down. And so hearing the word, the Bible, and the truth of Jesus spoken out was the normal. It was normal to gather and listen to teaching, listen to scripture being recited. And actually there's something very powerful about reading scripture together, which I would encourage us all to look for opportunities to do, that when you're with someone who's a believer, or even not, who, who is a non-believer, look for an opportunity to read some Bible together and you'll be amazed what happens. And finally I called it uh, my fourth section catching fish together because it's how we reach out together to those around us in our lives and specifically I really wanted to underline that we all interact with many people in our lives and actually the way we can support each other as church catching fish together is by knowing what's going on in our lives you know ask me what's happening in my week ask me what does my mission field look like this week Ask me who I'm going to encounter and then pray and stand with me. We can stand with each other as we are church that is um, affecting the world around us. We, we are being church. And finally and very most importantly, we are together because we're gathered around Jesus and he needs to be at the centre of everything we do. We can let each other down, we can fail each other, but Jesus being at the centre, it changes everything. So it, he pulls us back together as church. He keeps us together as church. That's something very powerful about having him at the centre. So Christ gave himself for us and he was generous to us. So even when we let each other down, we can know his generosity in our lives. He served us perfectly. He, he never gave up on us. He, he, he went to the cross and gave everything and served us perfectly. And because he has done that, in him, we can find a way to serve each other. He brought us to God. When we pray, we come to God. And Jesus brings us to God. And even when we forget to pray with each other, he is the one who keeps on bringing us back to the Father. He is the living word. He is the Bible. <laughs> Jesus is the Bible. <laughs> he is the word made flesh. So... When we read the Bible together, something very powerful um, about encountering Jesus in that word. So let's do that because he is it's the, the very person of Jesus is what we're finding and discovering when we read the Bible. And finally, he never gave up. He doesn't give up on us. Um, we don't need to give up on each other. We don't need to give up on church because Jesus never gives up. He went all the way to the cross. And so we can run this race together because Jesus never gave up.